In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use different buildups of the straight leg raise test to distinguish between primary disc related disorders and secondary disc related disorders. To perform the SLR with a distal initiation, you first flex the knee and hip and then dorsiflex the ankle to make sure to distally pre-tension the sciatic nerve to ensure maximal distal movement of the dura. From this position, bring the leg into an extended position again and passively flex the hip while you maintain dorsiflexion. Continue the movement until end range is reached or the patient's symptoms are reproduced. Next, ask your patient to flex his head with a chin tuck, thus flexing the cervical spine. In this position, we will have maximal tension of the dura. At last, release the dorsiflexion, which will allow the dura to move into cranial direction towards the starting position. For the SLR with proximal initiation, we first flex the hip and need to create slack in the dura. Now the patient is asked to flex his neck, which pretensions the lumbosacral plexus in cranial direction. Afterwards, dorsiflex the ankle and extend the leg. Then passively flex the hip while maintaining knee extension. This movement creates maximal tension, while this time the distal movement of the dura is limited by the cranial pretensioning. Finally, the patient is asked to return his head back to the bench, which reduces the cranial pretension and lets the dura move distally. With primary disc related disorders such as a disc protrusion, prolapse or extrusion, pain will be provoked especially when root tension is the greatest. This means that during the distal initiation we will have mild pain during the dorsiflexion and the straight leg raise. We will have maximal pain with the added chin tuck and neck flexion. And we will have decreasing pain as soon as the ankle dorsiflexion is released. In the proximal initiation we will most probably have no pain yet with chin tuck and neck flexion alone. Again, we will have maximal pain when dorsiflexion and a straight leg raise are added. And we will have decreasing pain again as soon as the head is brought back to the mat. With late primary or secondary disc related disorders, such as epidural adhesions, nerve root compression syndrome or intermittent neurogenic claudication, which often happens with lumbar stenosis, the provocation is direction dependent. In this case, provocation will occur due to loss of dural sleep mobility associated with fibrosis or the compression of the nerve uh, root's inflammatory focus. Imagine, for example, that your patient suffers from compression of an irritated root between a degenerative disc bulge anteriorly and a hypertrophic ligamentum flavum posteriorly. Then pain will increase with distal movement and it will decrease with proximal movement. Because distal movement will translate the root's irritable focus through the narrowed path. So with the distal initiation, I will have moderate pain with epidural adhesions of the dural sleeve and with nerve root compression with the dorsiflexion and the straight leg raise. I will then have decreased pain when the chin tuck and neck flexion is added and no pain anymore as soon as the ankle is plantar flexed. With the proximal initiation, I will have no pain with the chin tuck and the neck flexion. I will have still no pain with the added dorsiflexion and straight leg raise as the irritable focus of the nerve root and the dural sleeve are pre-tensioned cranially and my patient will feel an increase of pain when the neck and head are extended because now the irritable focus can move distally again through the small space of the intervertebral foramen. While you can distinguish between primary and secondary disc related disorders with the straight leg raise, 
You cannot further distinguish between nerve root compression and epidural adhesions like seen here. Therefore, you will have to do the slump test with different buildups. You can watch this video by a click in the top right corner. Alright, this was our video on the distal and proximal initiation of the straight leg raise test. I hope this video was helpful to you and enables you to distinguish between primary and secondary disc related disorders. At last, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't and follow us on various social media. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.